I'd like to give a shout out to Dancer Drawer. His links will be in the description to his channel. He makes amazing drawing tutorials and I would check him out. Now let's begin. Now warning before we start, I am not used to doing tutorial videos for drawings. So this is just a warning beforehand. If I say something off, just remember uh, I'm still getting used to this entire tutorial and explaining stuff. So just a warning before we start. So let's get into why you're actually here. Welcome back creatures of the animal kingdom and today I will be doing something a bit different than what I've um, used to doing which is doing a tutorial video but first off we have to get everything in preparation which is firstly reference we will need some referencing which I'll be using as a 12 inch figure and the backboard of that figure and some shots I found on YouTube that were leaked well, at least there's some positive coming out of it, but with that out of the way, referencing aside, we will have to start out with sketching and getting our proportions right. Now this is what I mean with proportions, because as you may have noticed, Mechagodzilla's in the new film is a bit off, with the upper uh, parts of limbs being a lot longer than the lower parts, feeling a bit more uneven and unnatural which I guess is what the feeling they were going for in the film, so it matches. But um, some of the figures may be a bit off of proportion, so if you haven't seen some of the shots, I would recommend going through and watching some of the scenes to get a better idea of how it should feel. So um, if I were to give an idea, use the proportion body of the 6 inch and the proportion size of the 12 inch for the limbs, just to get an idea and extend the tail a bit and the back sp sp uh, spine should be a bit longer and that would most likely give a better proportion look out for what you will look for in to drawing this character and give it a bit better idea of how it should actually look but with baseline, uh, baselining out of the way we will move into uh, positioning and such but I would seriously recommend going through and sketching as many times as you can with this character because even with the amount of time I used to sketch just to, for these different parts it still felt a bit off in some spots so just getting used to the proportions is going to take a bit of time because it doesn't feel right to draw that way so I would just recommend doing that for the moment now with positioning we will need to have a skeletal structure for instance, a head, chest, and lower hip section, which is the main ones I usually use. Because the stomach usually bends more than what the chest does, so the chest I usually just have as a solid section, like a bone structure, if you will, for how I do my drawings. Leaving the neck, tail, and back to move freely while the arms and legs are usually uh, more stiff of a structure usually only uh, usually uh, just normal lines to show where I should place them but I rarely do this only if like for this reason uh, the proportions feel a bit off to me and using them more as a baseline to help me keep in proportion with my characters that I seem to be using a bit more often off screen with some of my drawings and commissions trying to keep with that formula usually using just squares or rectangles for the hands to give me a center of where they should be po uh, positioned instead of the entire body Now this is when referencing will become more and more vital as we start building up uh, the drawing. First of all I'm just going to blacken it out and just minimalize. Ash, if you are doing this uh, sketching paper or so on just take your eraser and just lightly go over things and it will work out just as well. Um, just make sure the lines are, um, 
that you are using a soft type of pencil for this so that when you do the next line work and so on that it will stick out a bit more when you do the details but with that said now it comes into building basically the muscle structure which is kind of ironic thinking of just making a muscle structure for something mechanical anyways uh, starting off we will have to build up what we have with our forms and such to give an idea of what we will be doing so i'm just going to do that quickly and go over uh, go over what i did in the process Now just remember we're going through the basis not not the detailing that's going up next so this is just a main base to get your ideas of where the plating should be how the muscle structure should look if it's going to be muscular and such because I know a few people rather want that than the mechanical feel of this Mechagodzilla which I have read through some of the comment sections of that other video I made but this is just the basis just the muscle structure and not the detailing that's coming up next so what you will be having to focus on is where you should place every bit because it's going to overlap on some pieces and when you're going to do the detailing it will get confusing if you don't do it properly so just a reminder on that make sure you're plating if you're doing mechanical more mechanical than well bio uh, just to put your plating on the correct spots because I can already tell some people will get the neck area confused or the tail because this is a splitter joint and not like the previous versions where it is overlapping which is also one of the reasons why the foam looks a lot better than the actual toy model which probably has a bit more character but with that out of the way um, time to get into detailing and there is one major thing I will have to talk about when we get to there now when doing detailing specifically with new age makes after the 20, 20th century um, don't don't go with the full model trust me it will take forever to finish especially in digital art unless you have the time and you're extremely used to it then then go for a full detail because i'm going to tell you now last time when i went full detail with the ray player one version of it it took me over 12 hours to finish that entire drawing and that was just normal traditional and digital takes a lot longer so my recommendation don't go uh, don't go with full detail just yet go with just the main parts of what is necessary for the drawing to make it complete and go through it so that you can get a better idea of how to improve parts that you aren't used to drawing as much don't go full detail it will waste your time and it will make it extremely hard to get used to different surfaces and moving it around more because i have gotten stuck with that in some of my uh, characters and drawings where i'm just used to doing overly detailed parts with just one section of it so with that out of the way let's do the detailing and then i'll talk through from my experience with it and we can continue on to coloring and shading oh and a bit of a thing beforehand if you're gonna do the detailings and you don't know which model to go off use the 12 inch figure and some of the movie screenshots for the spack, uh, back spikes that were shown in some tv spots those are the best bits for best detailing i would recommend
what I said not to go full detail on everything. This is what I meant. Uh, this took me about over an hour just to complete a medium to small-ish detailed version of the character. So if you want to do the large and extreme details and such, I would recommend breaking uh, up the parts into different sections for different types of days just so that you don't end up hurting your arm because that's what I did last time when trying to do uh, Ready Player One Spec of Godzilla and it, I'm still feeling the effect a year afterwards so I would not recommend doing that uh, and overworking your arms now when going to detail wise just use simple shapes as it will give you the best effect as I've done with most of this. So otherwise we are going to go into shading then coloring. Why shading first and coloring? Because Mechagodzilla in this film specifically is mostly just grey. Uh, if you're looking at the back image here you'll see purple hues and browns and such. Most of that yes is somewhat part of it but you're mostly just going to have uh, use greys and such. Um, if you are seeing different colorings on it, it is most likely just background pieces of reflections and such. So unless you're using uh, different backgrounds and added parts like that, you're not going to have to use as many colors and such. So with that out of the way, we will get into shading and I'll explain a bit better when we get into the air. Now, looking back at the um, screenshots that were taken at the moment, there is some that look like scorch marks and such, so I added the effect of it by giving two tones, or just one straight tone of line of smudging. Uh, otherwise, this is just the normal type of um, shading and such, except for if you are going to go into the coloring for when it comes to the light, you are going to have to leave some open marks by either erasing or just uh, color it, um, shading past them into the lines that have been shown. I think that's about it for the moment. I will now be going into colorization and shading. If I didn't explain this so well, it's probably because it's bloody late in the night. So I'm gonna go and sleep and finish up the uh, colorization then come back to everybody when I'm properly finished. Alright, uh, back and I kind of did the coloring a bit backwards because if you're going to do this with pencil on normal paper you're going to have to do lighter sketch then darker then darker when you're going to do the red and the blue but if there are markings that you want to place somewhere like the blue uh, marks that were in the foam you're going to have to most likely erase some parts just to make it fit, uh, well come out a bit more since I'm kind of doing this on tablet you, I don't have to worry about it that much but if you are doing this on normal sketch, I would recommend just uh, erasing a bit of it, then using the shading of different tones of blue. I think that's about it. I'm gonna do a bit more sketch work to give the colorization of what I have with some pictures, because I feel like it's going to be an interesting look. But beyond that, I'm basically finished. I hope this helps just a bit. I know it's probably not going to be that much since this is my first time trying tutorial type of videos but I hope you all enjoyed and see you next week or later this video when I finish up. Now oh, that's about it, it didn't really change much. I did clean up some few parts just to make it look better and 
I think I'm done. No, that's it. This was mostly done before uh, March 31st when we could watch the movie online. So some of the parts may be a bit inaccurate, just to say a bit. But let's be honest here, you're not gonna go into full detail using this. You're most likely going to use the footage and such. So I think about that it. Uh, see you all next time. Remember to like if you enjoyed the video, comment if you have anything you want to ask, or just say something in general. See you all next video.